Just in to CNN, sources saying that White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows told FDA Commissioner Stephen Hahn that if he does not authorize the Pfizer vaccine today, he should submit his letter of resignation. Let's get straight to CNN's Caitlin Collins at the White House. Caitlin, what are you learning about this conversation between Meadows and Hahn? Well, Jake, it was a phone call that they had this morning, and basically the way this conversation was described to us by multiple people is that Mark Meadows told Dr. Hahn that if they were not prepared to grant that emergency authorization for Pfizer's vaccine by the end of today, that he needed to be prepared to resign. And we're told that's a larger sign of the president's frustration. We know he's been fed up with the FDA for weeks now, but this week specifically, he's been venting because he's seeing other countries roll out their vaccines and their citizens getting shots in their arms. And so he's been incredibly frustrated that the emergency use has not been granted here for Pfizer's vaccine, despite how it's been in the works for several days. And that comes, Jake, as we heard from the HHS secretary this morning saying they are working on this, that we are incredibly close to this, potentially just days away, and that this authorization could come as soon as this weekend. Yet the president's patience seems to be running thin, wearing thin, and that is why he was tweeting this morning, complaining about the FDA, calling it money drenched and telling them to, quote, get the damn vaccines out. And now, that led to this phone call between Mark Meadows and Stephen Hahn. But the question is whether or not he's actually going to be fired. And if the president is really going to go out there and fire the FDA commissioner with six weeks left to go in his administration, given this is the biggest thing that they are dealing with right now, Jake. Yeah, I saw the president's tweet. He misspelled the word damn. Um, one thing that I wonder about, uh, Caitlin, is there have been concerns about the president putting political pressure on the scientists that has undermined confidence in the vaccine, which of course is the last thing we need right now because we need about 70% of the American people to get this vaccine uh, when they can. How, how did Han respond to this reported threat? So he put out a statement saying that it was being misrepresented that he was told he was going to be fired if he didn't get it out. Instead, he said, that the FDA was encouraged to continue working expeditiously on this Pfizer vaccine. That's certainly not what the White House believes that the FDA has been doing. But you're right, Jake. There has been the question of whether or not there is this political pressure being exerted over the FDA and really what they're going to accomplish if they did fire the FDA commissioner because that could only potentially further undermine the confidence that this vaccine has gone through all the right process uh, making and decision making that it needs to go through. And so that's really the ultimate question that the White House is facing here when it comes to this. But we should note there have been multiple tense conversations between the White House Chief of Staff and Dr. Hahn over the last several weeks. This phone call was just really a culmination of that altogether. And the president is not even hiding that he is pressuring the FDA. He says the only reason they got this through so quickly is because of his pressure, which notably the White House used to deny that he was pressuring them at all, Jake. All right, Caitlin Collins, thanks so much. Uh, let's bring in Dr. Paul Offit. He was on the FDA advisory panel that met yesterday and voted in favor of recommending uh, emergency use authorization of Pfizer's vaccine. Dr. Offit is also director of the Vaccine Education Center at Children's Hospital uh, of Philadelphia. Uh, Dr. Offit, first I want to get your reaction to this reporting uh, that the White House is basically telling Dr. Hahn, approve and authorize the vaccine today or clean out your desk. I mean, we all share this urgency, uh, but isn't this inappropriate? It's just meaningless saber rattling. I mean, Pfizer submitted its emergency youth authorization on November the 20th. For three weeks, the FDA went through every piece of clinical data that, was, that, that Pfizer had for all these 44,000 patients that were participants that either received vaccine or received placebo to see if there were any inconsistencies in what Pfizer had submitted and all the primary data. Then and only then, they, formula, they provided to us, the Vaccine Advisory Committee, not only Pfizer's original application, but their assessment of all the other data. So there's two huge documents which we then got to review. On Thursday, after having reviewed that and having discussed all that, we recommended approval. It was very clear that the, the CDC met on Friday to, to basically look through the same data we, the FDA, looked through, and with an understanding that they were going to meet again on Sunday because they assumed that sometime in the next couple days, either, Friday, either tonight, Friday night, or Saturday, that the FDA would grant approval, which would be typical. And then on Sunday, they would vote on it because the CDC wouldn't vote on something that hadn't been yet approved by the FDA. So that, that the, the, uh, the administration says, you know, do this 
or else is ridiculous. They were doing it anyway. So I, I think it's just all show. It has it means nothing. It certainly doesn't rush the process in any sense. So people shouldn't be frightened that that's what's happening. But to be clear, Dr. Hahn, in your view, was probably going to authorize this today or tomorrow anyway. Exactly. But I, I have to say, you know, one of the concerns that there is uh, about the vaccine is there are so many skeptics in the public right now. According to polling, it's about one third of the American people. Uh, a number of them are in minority communities, uh, black communities that historically have been treated as guinea pigs, such as like the Tuskegee experiment, and they're very skeptical of the government. This could undermine confidence in the vaccine, I would think. Is, is that a concern? Well, I mean, hopefully people will be convinced by the, the compelling nature of the data. This is a 44,000 person study. 22,000 people got vaccine, 22,000 got placebo. It was 95% effective. It was virtually 100% effective against severe disease. It was 95% effective in people over 65. African Americans were certainly well represented. I mean, not perfectly represented, but about a little over 9% of the study participants were African Americans and that, who represent about 13% of the population. So it roughly equivalent to to looking this this trial looked like what America looks like. So, you know, it, it's it's when when you launch a, a vaccine like this, the, the you're not trying to answer the question, do you know everything? You never know everything. The question is, do you know enough to say that the, the benefits of the, this vaccine clearly outweigh its at mo the moment theoretical risks? And I think that answer was was pretty easy yesterday when we met. So the message from you, a member of the advisory committee, is the vaccine is safe. People should take it and ignore the president's buffoonery or, or saber, saber rattling, as you called it. Uh, just don't pay any attention to it. The process is going to work. That's what I'm hearing from you. Exactly right. I mean, President Trump is completely off the point uh, at this point in the, in the, in the process. Dr. Uh, Paul Offit, thank you so much for what you do, and thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it. Uh, let's talk about this with the panel. Uh, Olivier Knox, let me start with you. I, you heard Dr. Offit. It's possible that the FDA was going to approve the vaccine today or tomorrow. Um, but now, of course, there's this concern of more pressure from the president, politicizing science uh, and the concern that this could undermine confidence in the vaccine. Sure. And part of a pattern of the president of the United States pressuring, well, pretty much anyone, uh, American corporations, American lawmakers, American governors, American scientists, Amer American health advisors, members of his own cabinet, his attorney general, et cetera. Uh, and and I, I'm glad you highlighted the polling. The polling is pretty scary. There are large numbers, uh, particularly of women and of minorities, who are, according to recent polling by the Associated Press, hard nose or unsure whether they will take the, take the vaccine. And we need, as you said, about 70 percent of Americans to sign up for this in order to beat back the, uh, the pandemic. Uh, Niamhlika Henderson, President-elect Joe Biden, moments ago made a point to stress that the vaccine was developed free from political influence. It will be safe. He told me a couple weeks ago he will be, you know, he will be inoculated. He will be vaccinated <clears throat> in public if, if, uh, if appropriate. Um, what does this accomplish? D Donald Trump is on his way out the door. Why do this? This is a terrible, terrible thing, given what we know about the skepticism that many, many people have, people I talk to, people you all talk to, uh, as well about this vaccine. This is the fear that it was rushed, that they didn't do uh, their due diligence in uh, in this vaccine. You have the doctor, of course, uh, saying something different. People should look at the data, but people might not want to look at the data, right? I mean, that's not how people necessarily think about these things. Uh, they see what this president has done uh, with this phone call, with this real pressure. Uh, so I, this is a real dangerous, dangerous thing that, that happened today. I mean, when I read this story, my stomach dropped uh, because it is only going to uh, feed the skepticism, feed the view uh, that maybe people shouldn't take this vaccine because it, it is it has been politicized and maybe it was rushed. I mean, I talked to Democrats, white people, white men, uh, black people, bl you know, all sorts of folks are just so skeptical of this vaccine. And to have this happen today, you know, there needs to be some sort of widespread education campaign. You know, Dr. Offit uh, is one person and you saw uh, Joe Biden uh, talk about this today, but this needs to be uh, much more front and center. I think Ob Obama said that he could he might take this thing uh, live on television. It might not be uh, the best best viewing, but in terms of a public education campaign about this vaccine, that is going to be certainly necessary because people are just deeply skeptical and with good reason. 
Well, this, this, not according to the science. I mean, right. historically, they might be skeptical. That's right. I think there are two Trump, things. Or Trump yeah. politicizing it. But in terms of the science, they shouldn't be skeptical. They right. should take it. I'll, I'll certainly get it as soon as I can. It's a, just amazing to me, Operation Warp Speed, such a, an accomplishment of the Trump White House, and he continues to step all over it.